<laughs> it's the two garage guys. Hi everybody, welcome to the two garage guys show. We're here in the garage because we're going to be talking about garage music, the history of it. My name is Kent Morrill. And I'm Buck Ormsby. And we're talking garage. this show is going to be all about? Well, the show is about uh, garage rock and uh, how we all started here playing music back in the late, or in the middle 50s actually, and uh, practicing in garages and in basements, living rooms, wherever we could uh, put our amp, which was probably about that big, and, uh, you know, a set of drums and we'd start wailing away, you know, of course we had to go out into the garages because moms and dads, they didn't really understand what the heck we were doing. We were basically uh, kind of experimenting with uh, some rock and roll, you know, and uh, that's where we rehearsed. So anyway, it's about garage rock, some of the groups that uh, grew up here, that practiced here, and, uh, and uh, you know, we had to kind of invent a whole lot of music, you know, because uh, we were learning from, uh, you know, some old blues and R&B records. And, uh, well, maybe we should tell them who we are. We were the Wailers, the fabulous Wailers. Well, and that's how we started out back in 1958-59. But we also uh, started a little earlier than that because uh, a, little, a fellow named Little Bill uh, and I, his name is Bill Englehart, and I started a band called uh, Little Bill and the Blue Notes back in the uh, late 50s. And we're going to be, uh, you're going to be talking with Bill a little later, so uh, All right. right now we're going to go see our man on the street, right? Mr. Joey. Yeah, Joey. He's going to talk about some places that were popular back then. Here we are in Tacoma, Washington, looking out at Commencement Bay. And um, in fact, Dave Marsh from Rolling Stone magazine came here once and called this the Liverpool of the Northwest and can see how garage music started and, and how they were influenced to play the music that they played. This is where Little Bill and the Blue Notes got their start, mid-50s, 1956. This is where he lived and this is where the band practiced, right here in Tacoma. Wow. All right, here we are at the Tacoma Armory. This was the place. This is where the Whalers came out of the garage and into a much bigger venue. This holds about two to 3,000 people. As you can see over here, these guys, the line started here, went all the way around the building, and came out over here. There was a huge line. And not only did this, the Whalers play here, we had the Ventures, we had the Sonics, we had Ike and Tina Turner, we had Little Bill and the Blue Notes. Heck, we even had James Brown himself. And here we are at the Crescent Ballroom in downtown Tacoma. Now this is the place in the 1940s where big band orchestras played. And then this is really where teen dances started. Uh, it's also the place where Conway Twitty played before he went country. And the Whalers, in fact, backed him up. Um, late 50s, early 60s, Whalers, Ventures, Sonics, they all played here. And then there was a little bit of a lull in the 70s and uh, mid 80s. In the later 80s and the early 90s, that's where bands like the Melvins and, in fact, Nirvana played right here in downtown Tacoma at the Crescent Bowl. This is Stadium High School. Um, a couple of the Whalers uh, actually went here, but this was once a hotel uh, burned down and they rebuilt it as a high school. In fact, a couple movies have been filmed here in Tacoma and even Heath Ledger did a film called 10 Things I Hate About You, filmed right here at Stadium High School. Um, one other thing that we wanted to... Whoa! I'm okay. A little fall there. Wow. Yeah, well, Joey, you know, he has little accidents once yeah, in a while. Yeah, he says he's okay, but uh, he was there at... That's a big fall yeah. there at Stadium. Hopefully he'll be on, uh, be on the next show, too, you know. Joey, <laughs> you know, 
he's that's the way he is. He's a little stumbling here and there. But anyway, uh, what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to talk about some of the places that uh, you know we uh, performed at. You know, in those old days, you know, we used to have to uh, rent our own halls, little halls, little dance halls. Sometimes, as you said, it held 50 people. We'd get a license. We'd uh, put up our own posters, ride buses around town, put them up in the malt shops or whatever they were yeah. at the time, and we'd go and play at the places like the Armory and play at, uh, you know, this one little thing was uh, uh, at Stadium High School, which Joey mentioned there. We played at an assembly there one, one time uh, when we were graduating, and the little Bill and the Blue Notes played there, and it was about 1959. And it was the last day of school, and uh, it was like it was almost like blackboard jungle, you know. Mm. The music, the rock and roll, and the kids in the auditorium in this in the high school, and the principal came up and shut us down. Shut you down. Too much rock and roll, <laughs> but the kids were going crazy. Well, they they tried to shut us down too. Remember, the fathers of Tacoma kind of sent us out. Wouldn't allow us to play to their children? Well, yeah, because they thought it was the devil's music and they were going to corrupt their sons and daughters. Well, speaking of uh, Stadium and, and Little Bill, you had a nice interview with him. Why don't we take a look at that? All right. Little Bill. <laughs> 